Although I've made good progress in getting my camper ready for the cold temperatures, there's at least one more important improvement I need to make before I hit the road. Well, I'm almost ready for my first winter camp out since I installed this little Dickinson heater, but I have made a couple of improvements at least. First of all, that backing board is now stained. I used some Danish oil and yeah, it does look a lot better. Same color as my sleeping bag, so it blends in perfectly. I also added a shelf on the back and that is for this little USB fan. It's a Okupa and it sits on there with Velcro. The cord comes down here and right in behind I installed two USB outlets so I can also charge up my phone. It's always handy to have extra USB outlets. I haven't changed anything on the Dickinson itself. It's exactly the same because it's going to be in the real world of winter camping. I'll know how well it performs so we'll wait for that. I did I had a little hook up here. I did put this up here which is just a little coat hanger with clips on it. And this is for drying my wet gloves, which I'm sure I'm going to get. Now, as far as the camper itself, there was one thing I had to do, and I mentioned it before, is insulate the windows. They're just all single pane windows. And what I've been using is this Mylar. It's the padded Mylar. It's the same thing as those window covers in cars that you use, you know, to keep your car a little cooler in the summertime. Well, those shades also keep a camper warmer in the wintertime. Same concept, you can pick them up for a few dollars at a dollar store. And in my case, I just put these little vinyl windows in here so I could still see out. And that's the same with this one. Now, I did do a video on this uh, on uh, camper insulation in the past. And this last one, the, the big window in the back, I was using just plain vinyl. But what has happened is when it's folded up the rest of the year, all of a sudden it becomes this wrinkly mess. So I'm not going to do it that way anymore. I've just got the Mylar and I've got it Velcroed all around. And I think it'll keep it warm. And I did make a big window, so I'll still be able to see outside. For me, it's really, really important to see what's going on outside when you're solo camping. So all my windows have these little tiny windows. I've got the double insulation, but I still have the security. Now, there's other things that I've got to do to the cabin before I, uh, I actually take off winter camping. But when I did the videos on the, uh, the Dickinson heater, I had a few questions, concerns, and comments. And I wanted to address some of those first. Now, one question that I had several times was, because this little heater runs on propane, was I not worried that it was going to add moisture to my camper? And the answer was no, but I wasn't quite sure where they were coming from until I realized that I had done a video in the past of another propane heater that did add a lot of moisture in the air and they equated propane with moisture. But the fact of it is that all fuels, whether it be propane, diesel, gasoline, kerosene, wood, coal, even hydrogen. The byproduct of combustion is always water. And so it's not the issue of what type of fuel it is, it's the type of heater that's the problem. And the one I had, had uh, reviewed was a catalytic heater. And what it did is it took the propane as well as the oxygen from inside your trailer, combined them to produce heat, yes, which was a good thing. It also produced water, carbon dioxide, and in many cases, carbon monoxide inside your camper. But with something like this, it is all taken place, the, the heat and the combustion all starts in a little chamber right here. And this is sealed off. This is a glass window. There's a seal around here. So the whole combustion process is here. It is not in the cabin air. And the intake 
is this hose, the outside hose here, brings in the oxygen, it combines with the propane, it combusts, and all the nasties, you know, the carbon dioxide, goes out that inner pipe outside. So it does not rob the cabin of oxygen, and it does not put carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide in the cabin either. It's all contained in here. It gives you heat, but it does not give you water. It's dry heat, and that's exactly what I want. Now I realize not everybody watches every one of my videos, so the next question, I sort of knew I had it coming. And that is, why did I go through all that hassle of putting that little propane heater in the corner? Um, you know, it was expensive, I had to cut a hole in my roof. When I had this spot right here that has my old RV furnace. Well, I think most people know why I'm not using this old RV furnace. It was noisy, it was inefficient in its fuel, and it used a lot of electricity. It had to go. When I went to replace it, I found out the new RV furnaces were far more expensive than a new Dickinson. So there was no advantage whatsoever. But could I not put something else in its place? And a lot of people wondered why I did not put a little torpedo diesel heater in there. In behind there, there's probably enough room. I'm sure it can be done. And by the way, I actually have a diesel heater. However, why is it not going in here? The number one reason is I cannot stand the smell of diesel. I'm one of these people that's very, very sensitive to the fumes of diesel. And even if I'm out on the highway and a transport truck is in front of me and the fumes are coming in, I gotta get around them or I'm gonna get a headache. So no, I cannot use diesel. However, other people, you know, especially if your tow vehicle is diesel, it's a no-brainer to put diesel in your camper, and I'm sure there's enough area there. For me, personally, I think I may look into either a gasoline-powered one, or there's the Propex, which is also uh, propane-powered. It would fit in there, but I'm not going to go there yet. Let's see if this heater works well first, and then we'll see what the alternative could be. So I think that's enough about the heater. Let's talk about another essential for winter camping with an RV, and that is power. Electricity. I need lots of it, especially in the winter time because it's darker for longer periods of time. So I need to power the lights. I need to charge my batteries. And uh, even the heater actually has a fan, so it needs electricity as well. In the summertime, this is pretty easy. I've got a solar panel on the roof, and I have a lithium battery. This one here is my Scream Power. Love that name. And I've been using this for a couple of years. Uh, works great in the summertime. I've never had any issues with it. And it was one of the first uh, uh, batteries that I found was under $500. So yeah, I could afford it, which was good. However, in the wintertime, there are problems with lithium batteries. And a battery like this actually has a battery management system that shuts it down if it gets too cold. Which is lose-lose because when you really need the power, when it's really cold, you don't have a battery. So that's a problem. And uh, some people have solved it in different ways. Uh, for example, there are some people that put a, uh, like a heating pad for your RV water tank. Um, you can buy those separately uh, and you just put it in the compartment that your battery is stored in. The problem with those is they typically run on either 65 watts or 100 watts of power, which is a lot to me. Um, I know they're, they, they're thermostatically controlled, but still it could be potentially using a lot of power and I have to conserve the power in the winter time because I really need it. So one other solution and the manufacturers came up with this is why not just put a heater in the battery? And they now do that. Unfortunately, when I was looking around for one, they were all, and still are, extremely expensive. Like it was like over $1,000 more 
just to have a heater in the battery? I mean, come on, there's got to be better ways. So I was looking around, is there some way I can get a little bit more heat, but it doesn't use a lot of power? And I think I found a solution. Because I went on Amazon and I bought this, which is a little personal heating pad. And this is just cloth, it's, uh, and, and it's got an element running through it, like wires, uh, about 10 inches by 20 inches. It's used for heating people. It's for right next to the skin, so it obviously doesn't get too hot. Uh, I did some tests, and I think the hottest I could get it was about 45 Celsius, which is, what's that, about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, about the temperature of hot water for a shower. Um, what I like about this is it runs on USB. It doesn't use a lot of power at all. Um, it runs on 5 volts. It actually only delivers 10 watts of heat, which is enough to keep... Uh, and it's both, I guess it also keeps pets warm. You can put it under uh, the, uh, the pet pad and uh, it'll keep your cat warm. <laughs> Not like the Griswold cat. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. But anyway, here's what I want to do. I want to take this and put it underneath the battery. And it'll just keep it a little warmer for those periods of time where I'm not in the trailer and it could potentially get below freezing. So, what's the best way? I can't just put it under there. This would probably crush the, you know, the fine wires. Is there a better way that I can keep this battery warm with a little heating pad? And I think there is. Now, I should mention that in the past, before I got the lithium battery, I used an AGM or a lead acid battery deep cycle for winter camping. They weren't that affected by the cold, but they also weren't that efficient either. And that's why I really want to use a lithium battery. Now, what I usually do is I have a battery box. I put the battery in there and I store it under the seat compartment right over in that area. It keeps it warm with the cabin air and I actually secure this down to the floor so it doesn't jiggle around in transportation. So this is the battery box and it fits very well. And I added a window to this side. And the reason for that is this particular lithium battery and, and others do as well, has an on off switch on the side and USB ports, which is perfect because that's what I need for the heating pad. So I've got that. Now I want to put the pad in here, but I don't want the battery to crush it. So what did I do? I put little spacers. These are, there's one at the top and there's one at the bottom. It's about three quarters of an inch high and that's right perfect space for the pad. I just folded it up a little bit more. It won't get crushed. It'll heat the bottom and there's enough air around here that it's not going to get too overheated. And some might think, well, you know, why don't you also insulate the battery box and insulate the lid? I could, but I don't think I need to. I want to make sure the heat can be released. I know it's not going to be super hot, but I think, for the time being, it just needs that little boost. The spacers were attached with wood screws. After plugging in the cord, the heating pad is positioned with the connection at the edge. I carefully lower the battery down, making sure the cord is clear. And thread the cord through the window. I plug the other end into the battery and turn it on. Well, I think I'm almost ready to wrap this video up, but I want to go over the three major changes I made to this camper before I head out on this trip. And the first one is I now have insulation underneath the floor. The second is I just bought a new heater and I need to try it out. And the third is I'm now keeping my lithium battery warm with a heating pad. Now there are so many other things that I have to do to prepare for a trip, but I've covered them in other videos. So rather than go on and on and on, I'm just gonna list some of those videos in this video's description. Uh, I also used to do uh, 
little fix-up tricks that were like under five dollars. So here's one for this one. This cushion has been a pain for me because it doesn't stay up. It's a flat cushion. It's a curved surface. I tried Velcro and it just won't stick. And it has to be a flat cushion because this whole area comes down into a secondary bed. Um, what can I do to keep this thing from flopping around? And it's the same with the one over there. So I went to the store and I bought a bungee strap. Same kind of bungee strap I secure my kitchen utensils with. I screwed into the corner, like into the seat. And the other end, I just added a snap fastener and I snap it to the male end over here. And now the cushion stays in place. You know, it's, it was like all the time that I'd be traveling and when I come back into the cabin, the cushion's all over the place and I'd get all stressed out. Ah, now I can just relax. The rest should be pretty easy. I'd been protecting the trailer with a cover, which I will now remove and store. Usually I can just unbuckle the straps and push it off with a broom handle. But this time something was wrong. It wouldn't budge. Fortunately, I carry a telescoping ladder at the back, so I unstrapped it to take a look. Here's the problem, ice. There was freezing rain here a few days ago. And so this massive sheet of ice is on top of my cover. Uh, I'm still glad I had the cover because I would be taking it off my solar panels. Oh, it's a little wet in there as well. So I got no choice. I've got to take it off piece by piece. Well, unfortunately, I did put a tear in my cover, but I do have some tape that'll seal that up once it's dry, so I better remember that before I put it on next. Well, off I go. Oh yeah, I forgot to say where I'm going. I'll tell you next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and please check out my others as well. Keep warm. <laughs>